carbon frames. Light, stiff, and with complex tube shapes. As cyclists, many of us see these as the pinnacle in performance, but not all carbon frames are equal. Think of it like cooking. You could start with the same raw ingredients, but place them in the hands of a Michelin-starred chef, and the meal you get at the end of it is gonna be radically different than if you were to just give them to a regular commie chef. And that's why I'm here in Lombardy, Italy, to show you a new way of making carbon frames, a method which has greater consistency, accuracy, and quality over previous techniques. You may have seen our previous video where we showed how carbon frames can be made using a traditional layup process. However, 3T are going to show us how they're using cutting edge techniques and machines. Three T was founded in 1961 and is known for its high-end Italian frames and components. And like much of the bike industry, manufacturing of these components was moved out to Asia in order to remain competitive. However, through technological innovation, Three T has managed to bring frame manufacturing back to Italy. And the tech that they're using in order to do this is seriously cool and impressive. And I can't wait to show you. This is the factory floor here at 3T. And as mentioned, you may be familiar with the traditional way of making carbon fiber bikes, which involves a layup process. And the big disadvantage with this kind of process is well, it's incredibly labor intensive. It requires hundreds of individual pieces of carbon to be cut out and then laid up into molds by hand. And in total, it typically takes 24 to 48 hours of human labor time in order to make a complete bike frame. And that's why we've seen manufacturing shift over to areas where the labor cost is cheaper because this is the most significant overhead in making a carbon frame. 3T is using a technique called filament winding and I mean, it's absolutely incredible to see. In here are some of the machines that do it. And interestingly, 3T actually, the engineers have joked saying that 3T is more of a, a machine making company than a frame making company because all the machines used in this process, they've designed and built themselves. Filament winding isn't new, it's an established technique for making carbon tubes and wheel rims that have a consistent cross section. But 3T has taken it to the next level and this has allowed them to make complicated tube shapes with aero profiles that are, you know, such as this down tube from a 3T race max. You can see here in the finished frame, this has been filament wound, knitted, but just look at how complex and changeable this whole cross section is. You attach a roll of carbon on here and it's able to knit the carbon around a mandrel of the desired tube shape and size. Normal filament winding would pass the dry carbon filament through some resin here and then knit the combined carbon and resin together. However, this process is messy and not suited to complex shapes. So 3T has cleverly developed another way without resin. Instead of resin, a top secret ingredient is applied to the fiber, which sticks it together at this initial stage. Watching the filament winding happen is, it's, it's incredible to see. You can just see the beautiful weave on the carbon being so uniformly knitted across this complex section. Uh, having seen re regular layup techniques performed, if you wanted to achieve this level of complexity, you can't, it just takes so long to do by hand and it would well, be less consistent and less accurate from sort of person to person. And uh, it's, just a, well, it's just so beautiful you're seeing it done in this way and just so efficient. While it's being knitted periodically, UV light is shone on the frame and this activates the special ingredient and helps stick the carbon together. Without this, what would happen is it would just be a loose pile of cloth. It wouldn't hold its shape like it is now and it would just fall to bits. The tube shapes are wrapped around specific 
mandrels to give them their shape. And this is a key step, mandrel removal. How do you remove this from inside of your wrapped carbon? Well, on a normal, regular filament winding process with, say, a consistent round tube, that's a relatively easy thing to do. But here, it's a significant engineering hurdle. However, 3T has worked out a clever way of how to do it. And they've showed me, um, but now I'm sworn to secrecy as I, I can't tell you how they, they do it because it's top secret. You just have to take my word for it. They, they, they know how to do it and it's clever. As mentioned, this is a down tube and it's ready to go on to the next step. But before I do, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about the carbon because this carbon has no resin in it and that's why it's very soft and it just, well, it feels like felt to the touch. One of the key differences here is the raw carbon that's being used. Now, carbon fibre is a combination of fibres of carbon bound together in a matrix of resin. And most frames use what's known as pre-preg carbon. This is carbon fibres pre-impregnated, pre-loaded with that resin. But here, 3T is using raw carbon with no resin and it adds its resin later on. And this has a number of advantages. Firstly, there are far more different types of raw carbon available than types of pre-preg carbon. There's far more raw ingredients at your disposal, to go back to my chef analogy. It's a bit like buying, you know, potatoes rather than buying a bag of crisps or potato chips if you're from America. Raw carbon is also cheaper than pre-preg carbon, which means that 3T can buy the lightest, stiffest, most high quality, best carbon fibers in the world available to humanity and still remain competitive, which is exactly what this stuff is. I mean, it looks exactly the same as this stuff, but it's not. This is 550 euros per kilogram. It is Torre, M55JB. I don't know what that means either, but um, trust me, this is, I've been, well, I've been told, this is the, the good shit. Next comes the molding stage, which involves placing those carbon tubes inside a two-part aluminium mold that 3T uh, manufactures itself in-house. And then bladders are placed inside the tube sections so that you can create that outwards pressure, pushing the carbon outwards to conform to the mold. This process is known as resin transfer molding. And it's a clever process because normal molding of carbon frames uses prepreg carbon as mentioned, and that has the resin already in it. Here, the resin needs to be introduced. So it's injected at low pressure through these channels into the mold, and then it flows and distributes evenly throughout the frame. Kind of a bit like how your blood is able to flow through your blood vessels and through your capillary networks throughout your body. The mould has to be airtight and have a vacuum so that it can create the pressure to draw the resin all the way through the frame. And getting an even distribution of resin in the frame so that you don't just have a really high concentration of resin near the injection port and then areas of not much resin or no resin in other parts of the frame is a really significant engineering challenge. And according to 3T, it's been the hardest one they've had to overcome in order to establish and master this process. There are some big advantages to this kind of process though, such as greater consistency of the final product and also fewer voids in the carbon. So voids are gaps in between the carbon layer and they're caused by inconsistencies in the, the hand laying up of the individual pieces, but also just by air bubbles forming inside the molding process. However, by having this kind of process where you're drawing the air through, it kind of has the ability to sort of suck the air bubbles out and reduce those voids. It's a bit like stickers. So if you, when you stick a sticker down, sometimes you have an air bubble in there, but you're able to push the air bubbles out of it. And that's kind of what happens here by having that vacuum pulling the air out. It's able to draw those voids out 
and reduce, and in most cases, eliminate them. At key points in the mould, there's these CNC machined inserts that go in to achieve really great machined accuracy and high tolerances at the key points. So we've got the bottom bracket, the, the headset area, and also the seat post insertion. So this two-part insert for the bottom bracket sort of screws into place there, and then it's a two-part thing that goes on. By doing it this way, 3T reckons it can achieve plus or minus 0.001 millimetres of tolerance on the bottom bracket alignment and the other hardware contact points as well. It's very nice, it's a very clever way of doing it. Next comes the moulding process. So inside the mould there, which the engineers have been carefully assembling, is the carbon frame. And it's now being held in place by two big presses. Now the mould itself is heated here. And that's an advantage because it saves time and it's more energy efficient compared to normal processes where they put the mould inside great big ovens. And it's heated to 80 degrees, which is again a lower temperature than what you'd normally use. And a lower temperature means just less stress on the mould and the whole process in general. Pipes are currently being attached and this is to create the vacuum and also monitor the vacuum pressure as that's really important for making sure that you properly extrude the resin through the frame and then also the resin is going to be introduced and injected into the frame too. And you know all this process takes 140 minutes. This is the frame as it comes out of the mould and you can see that while it does require some surface preparation, it requires much less prep than a standard frame out of a normal layup process. You can see the beautiful sort of carbon weave in the frame. It really does look nice and well, you can make a feature of it and have sort of naked finish on the frame. Also, we've got half of the, the bottom bracket gauge in that I showed you earlier that can just be removed and fits perfectly so that you get that sort of perfect alignment of both sides of the bottom bracket and it's perfectly round. You'll have to forgive the noise of the machine behind me, but it's doing an important job as it whirs away. So after the moulding process, the rear triangle and the frame are separately placed onto jigs in this machine behind me. And it's a special milling robot that's been, you guessed it, designed and built here by 3T. And its job is to precisely drill out and mill out the holes for the hardware points that are on the frames. Right now behind me, it's working on the rear triangle and it's actually milling out the holes for where the direct mount brake calipers go for the disc brakes, but it also drills out holes for other hardware and contact points such as the bottle cage holes or bits for wiring and cable routing. Following the drilling of the hardware points by the noisy machine, to the left of me, the burrs are removed on the frame that are residual from the moulding process. This is done by hand at the moment, but I'm reliably informed by 3T that there is, quite predictably, a robot in the pipeline that's going to do this in the future. The frame is then attached onto this jig so that the rear triangle can be assembled and glued in place. And by using this jig technique, they can get much higher tolerance. So you're looking at plus or minus 0.5 of a millimetre tolerance on the chainstay length compared to a traditional layup process where you're looking at typically plus or minus two millimetres on chainstay length tolerance. So much more precise doing it in this way. You can see the engineer behind me applying special carbon glue so that the rear triangle can be put in place. And then comes another little clever manufacturing solution which is a special localised heating element that's clamped in place over that join there to, to glue it in place and cure the glued joint. Ordinarily, when I've seen this done in the past, the whole frame is transferred into an oven to bake it and cure those glued joints. But doing it in this way is much more energy efficient because it's just localised heating and it saves a lot of energy. You see here a frame that's had the rear triangle 
bonded onto it and it's got all the holes for all the, the hardware in there. And it's been surface polished to give a really sort of natural, nice carbon uh, effect through the, through the lacquer. And well, showing off that carbon weave, it really is beautiful. You can get them painted as well, but 3T doesn't do its painting in-house at the moment. That's done elsewhere. But I'm gonna go out on a, on a limb here and guess that there's probably a robot in the pipeline that's gonna be doing painting here in the future. Anyhow, I think we should leave the noise of the factory floor now and go and see a completed bike with all the components attached to it because 3T has got something very special to show you downstairs. Check this out. I mean, this is quite possibly the coolest thing I've ever seen. So 3T is celebrating its 60th anniversary right now. And to celebrate that, here is their latest Race Max frame in a limited edition 60th anniversary special livery, complete with loads of amazing, beautiful little details on it and a little nice plaque on the back. And it comes in this box, which is incredible. Only 60 of these are being made in the entire world. And this box has everything in it you could need uh, to go for a ride. So it's got Italian elite water bottles, Italian Coup sunglasses, a cask helmet, Italian Castelli clothing, and Campagnolo e-car group set on the bike. And well, it's just absolutely stunning, isn't it? And I feel incredibly lucky right now because I'm one of the few people in the world that's ever gonna get to ride this. And I'm gonna go ride it right now. I can't wait. All in, 3T says that it can make a fully finished frame in eight and a half hours, which is significantly less than the, the normal sort of 24 to 48 hours it takes with normal layup techniques. And more impressively, they reckon they can get that down to six hours if they optimize the process and use even more robots. They love robots. But how nice is this Explorer Race Max? It's just, oh, it's just covered in gorgeous little details all over it. And you can see the beautiful carbon layup underneath the lacquer and this nice blue lacquer here and the carbon layup on the, on the One Piece 3T chain set as well. And of course, it says made in Italy on the top tube there. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this fascinating process and how this beautiful bike is made and how by increasing automation at every single step, you're reducing that human error, leading to greater consistency and quality. It really is impressive. And it means that I can ride a beautiful Italian bike with Italian components that's been made in Italy, in Italy, which is a truly special thing. <laughs>